All right, in this tutorial, we're going to be covering all of the various web design softwares. Now, we're specifically going to be looking at the web design software for designing, like a web design, user interface, design, UI, UX, not development, not the programs that are used in web design for actually doing the code and development. I'll cover all the available options for doing code in a future tutorial. This one's going to cover specifically the design programs. Now, there's a whole plethora of programs out there. And what you'll find is that more and more, all of the programs are sort of copying one another and they're all becoming more and more alike. So while there are quite a few differences between them, pretty much any software you use will get the job done as long as you learn the tools. Now we're gonna start off here with a program called Adobe Illustrator. So Adobe Illustrator is a program primarily used for vector graphics. So you're gonna be using Illustrator whenever you're gonna be doing a logo design, especially or anything that requires complex vector graphics there isn't a better program than illustrator so let's jump in really quick and i'll just show you the interface of what this program looks like so illustrator is part of the creative cloud from adobe and it features a whole entire software suite you have all the vector tools you can imagine here you've got complete control over layers and groups and effects and even raster based styles so Illustrator is a really great program for doing vector style work, but you can also do some web design work in here as well. Next up, we have Adobe Photoshop. Now, Adobe Photoshop is Adobe's program that's primarily used for pixel or raster based editing. So whenever you need to work with photography or any images that are raster based, meaning made out of pixels, Photoshop is the best program to use for that. Now, Photoshop is kind of a tool that most web designers will need to learn regardless of the other tools they use. You'll find yourself jumping into Photoshop quite a bit to edit photos. I didn't list it here, but an alternative to Photoshop is a program called GIMP, G-I-M-P, and that's a free version that's sort of an alternative to Photoshop. There's also an alternative to Illustrator, which is called Inkscape, and that's a free alternative as well to Adobe Illustrator. So let's jump into Photoshop and take a look. Photoshop has a full featured interface as well. Most of the Adobe programs feature a somewhat similar interface. So you have all the layers and then all of the tools over here on the left-hand sidebar for working with your graphics. So again, this is a raster-based program, but it also actually now does support artboards. So you can actually create artboards instead of the traditional canvas inside of Photoshop. They also have a video timeline animation. You can do full 3D lighting effects as well in Photoshop. So it's kind of a big program to learn, but there's a lot of a lot of things you can do in Photoshop. And again, most people will end up touching this program throughout their careers. The last Adobe program I'll mention here is called Adobe XD. Now, Adobe XD stands for Experienced Designer, and it's the newest product from Adobe. And this product is specifically for UI U and UX design and especially prototyping. So it allows you to do quick interfaces, do some quick designs, and then prototype them interfaces with simple interactions and animations for swiping between various pages that you would often see in mobile apps. It's Adobe's newest product, and it's probably the least full featured. It's fairly basic in what it can do. So let's jump in and take a look. So this is just a little comp that I've been working on here that we're gonna be building in the future videos in this tutorial. But you can see Adobe XD only has a few basic tools over here on the left-hand sidebar. And doing any raster-based effects are kind of non-existent. You can't do multiple shadows. You can't do grouped elements and shadows and a few things like that, multiple borders, uh, strokes, all those things. So you just have a few basic effects in here like fills and gradients and simple borders. But it's a very excellent program for doing rapid prototyping and design work. Now they're doing quite a bit of development inside of XD. They release new versions quite constantly uh, and consistently, and it's actually free. So you don't have to have an Adobe Creative Cloud subscription in order to use Adobe XD. So it's a program that you can jump right into and start using. And it's the program I'll be using for the design tutorials in the future videos. Now, I should preface that it's not my favorite program, um, I think there's other programs that I think are a little bit better, but because of its low barrier to entry and its, e its usability and easy to learn for beginners, that's the reason I chose this for our videos in this series. All right, next up, we have a program called Sketch. Now, Sketch is a program that came along a couple of years back, and I would say really changed the industry. It's the sort of reason why Adobe XD exists today, because it put 
uh, Adobe sort of on their heels. A lot of people left Photoshop and moved over to Sketch because it did so many things a lot better for user interface design especially. So Sketch is a program that is Mac only. So you can't run it on a Windows machine, but it is wildly popular. I would say, in my personal opinion, that Sketch is the best program out of all the softwares I listed for doing web design and interface design. Uh, it's just a little bit more polished and has more features than the rest. But like I mentioned, they're all right now copying each other. So when one program adds a feature, the other one sort of adds it, and they're all kind of becoming more and more alike. So let's jump into Sketch and take a look. You can see here, Sketch has a similar interface to some of the other user interface and prototyping. One thing that Sketch is a little bit more light on is the prototyping aspects. So while XD does have some great prototyping things, Sketch is a little more light on those features, but they're integrating those more and more. Uh, but they support, you know, multiple shadows, multiple borders, multiple fills on each of the elements. It's a very intuitive, easy to use interface. And so it's, it's very popular for doing uh, responsive web design because you have multiple artboards and can easily switch back and forth between them as well. Next up is a software called Envision Studio. Now, Envision typically was a prototyping software that was based online. So they only had an online version of their prototyping software, but they've recently jumped into this UI UX uh, foray like the rest of the world, and they've released this product called Envision Studio. It's a standalone de uh, app that you run on your machine. It runs on Windows and PC, and it's got a lot of the same features as Sketch. Let's take a look. Now, Envision Studio has a similar vibe to Sketch uh, in that it has, you know, it's kind of the same deal with multiple artboards, multiple pages, groups and folders can be grouped easily, and a few things like that. The one thing that I think that Envision is lacking on a little bit is the shadow effects. So when you add shadows to groups and elements, and especially PNG images, they don't quite work as you would expect. It applies a shadow around the box instead of the actual uh, clipped artwork. And there's a few things with masks that are kind of the similar way. One thing that Envision Studio does have going for it is their collaboration tools. So they have some live collaboration tools, which are really excellent uh, that Envision is sort of known for. Next up is a program called Figma. Now, Figma is a little bit different from the other programs because it is entirely browser based, meaning the entire application is run inside of a web browser. So you can use it on a Mac or a PC or really anything that supports a web browser. So it's a little bit different that way. Let's go ahead and take a look at the interface. Figma is similar to the other software you've seen where you have sort of your pages and symbols and things like this on the left. And then on the right, you have all the properties that you can manipulate on the individual objects. As I mentioned, it all runs inside of the browser. The only downside of that is that if you're working with very high resolution images, you have to sort of upload them first to your project in the cloud before you can then begin to manipulate them inside of Figma. Whereas on the other desktop apps, you just drag and drop an image and it sort of poof immediately there and you can then manipulate it right away. So that's kind of one of the hiccups of this program. And they're a little bit more limited on what they can do with plugins, but they do have a very robust plugin system with collaboration and prototyping tools built in as well. All right, last on my list is a program called Webflow. Now Webflow is also a bit different than the other programs because it is a design software but it runs entirely in the browser as well. Now, the main difference in Webflow is that Webflow is meant to design web pages, but it also creates the HTML and the CSS for you. So it's like a WYSIWYG website builder program, kind of like your Squarespaces and Wixes, and maybe even it's more akin to maybe a visual Dreamweaver. So it does have very robust design tools, but it also creates the code for you. So one kind of nice thing about Webflow is that every little tool and effect and toggle that you create directly corresponds to a CSS effect in some sort of way. So it's a pretty fancy tool. I won't jump into the interface here because it doesn't, uh, it's a little bit different than the other programs, but I did want to mention it because it is an option for designing web pages uh, in 2019. All right, and that is the roundup of what I consider to be the most formidable or front-facing softwares for doing web design in 2019. Again, any of the softwares would likely work great for you. All of the softwares I mentioned are in under rapid development. They're constantly coming out with new versions, new features all of the time. And sort of a big trend in the softwares lately is not only the design aspect, but they're all introducing prototyping aspects along with 
collaborative features. So it'll be interesting to see kind of how this space shapes up in the next couple of years and kind of where these softwares end up. But uh, I'll link to each one of these softwares down in the description so you can take a look at each one of them individually and choose which program you'd like. Now for our specific course and these lessons, we're going to be using Adobe Experience Designer. I spent a lot of time thinking about which software to use considering price, you know, what's going to be the easiest and most approachable for most users to get into. Uh, in the past, I've typically always used Photoshop for my web design work, but Photoshop is a very large software and it takes quite a bit of time just learning Photoshop to get enough knowledge to where you can start to design in web pages. So I've opted to use Experience Design from Adobe because I think it has a pretty easy learning curve and not, not a large barrier of entry. So that's the software we'll be using. And in the future tutorials, we're going to be jumping right into the software, designing a page, and then we'll eventually code it all as well. So subscribe, like, and we will see you in the next one.